How, how do you find a voice when you're looking at a cartoon character drawing? Let's say you're looking at that. Ninety-nine percent of the time, when I was <clears throat> doing all of this, I didn't ever see a picture of the character. Yeah, that happens. They, they come in and they say, "Here's the line. It's a, a line." And they say, uh, basically, they give you two or three words and they describe what it is, and the rest is left to your imagination. I like to feel what Gary was talking about. If you cannot do a voice that you can cry and laugh in. Mm -hmm. You're not ready with that voice, because yeah. that is really, that is the two far ends you need to reach in the middle, so that you can have access to the vulnerability and access to the passion of competition. Mm. So having that, a lot of it is, like he was talking about, using your body cavity, knowing that. I worked with um, Harry Shearer on The Simpsons, and. I noticed that when he was going to do Mr. Burns, he would be off to the side going, no, 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 And all of that was warming his body cavity. So it came to Skinner or it came to Mr. Burns, he was already in that lower register. And he was warmed up and ready in that register. So no, 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 is something that you can use to uh, bring your bo your voice up and bring your voice down and where you don't push it Where you don't push it up and you don't push it down. That's where it that is. That is where your natural speaking tone is and Like Gary was talking about not only knowing where the microphone is knowing your body knowing that part of the uh, of the element of your instrument then you know where to send it, you know how to use your body cavity, whether or not you're going to use an, a, an ooh or an ah behind it and have a resonant tone mm -hmm. and then articulate above that resonant tone or whether you're going to remove that tone altogether and have a whole different kind of voice. You know, I was talking about shrapnel a little bit. Shrapnel was one of these guys, they said they wanted him to be an insect uh, but they had this repeating thing. So I was thinking to myself, well, an in insect would be like that kind of stuff. So I thought, all right, I'll put a little in there. And then I thought, well, uh, but he has to have some fluctuation. He has to have an impact because he's got electricity surging through his body. So he's going to be up and down and all over the place. So I thought, well, I'll take that little old lady who sits there and goes, guillotine, and I'll put her behind them. And I came, <coughs> I came up with, <laughs> which is basically just using that with in the background. And that's body warmth and body tone mixed with your vocal cavity and using your head, your resonant tones, whether you want to place it in the neck, the top of the chest, or like he's talking in the middle of the mouth, the top of the head, or in the nose. These are all areas you have to know about because you loosen your jowl, you put your tongue on one side other than, or the other side, you can completely change how you speak and how you articulate. The rest is you do something like you orchestrate the copy. And orchestrating copy is marking where you can take your breath, where you want to place emphasis. You can put little brackets around word phrasings that you know you have to sell. This is the gist of what the point is. A lot of that helps you get there. You don't always have time to orchestrate the copy, but if you're doing, it's just like Gary was talking about playing an instrument, you have to do the chords every day. You have to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse, because you never know when you're called in what part of your voice they're gonna ask you to use. So be ready.